Well, you guys are here for a treat tonight, especially those who haven't been here before. And I see some familiar faces, which have been, because we do have an expert here tonight, a professional that's here to show you guys how to pitch, AKA the pitch man is here tonight. So I want everyone with a really, really strong Miami applause. Thank you for that applause. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you how great that makes me feel. Makes me feel strong, powerful, and unstoppable. So let me ask you a question. In the last 48 hours, who here in the room has gotten applause from a fellow worker, a lover, a friend, Anyone? Raise your hands. You got applause? How'd you get applause, Jen? Because I developed my staff and they appreciate that. Fantastic! So they actually applaud you. <laughs> so for those of you that have not gotten applause in the last 48 hours, that will change tonight. We're here to talk about pitching. Now I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit unorthodox when it comes to the way people pitch, and I'm going to tell you why. Most people think that a pitch gives you 60 seconds to spit out everything you are about yourself so that you can get people interested in what your product, what your service is, what you do, right? Here's the deal. A pitch is an interactive conversation. Your entire role when talking to other people and communicating is to get them to respond to you. So let me think about a story. I love the story. Yes. I love the story. And remember what I said before, the 738-55 rule, okay? I'm not interested in his content. I don't care what he said, quite honestly. But what I want you to really be able to think about is how he said it. Did he convince you about the experience that he went through? Yeah. Any, any, any comments for him? Do you think his projection was good? Did he get his message out there for you? Could it be a little more loud? But that's a little bit more loud? That's what I would say, yeah. He okay. was personable, too. Very personable. Nice. It was a great story. That's and very personable. Now, I want you to take a deep breath for me from your belly now, not your chest. <laughs> <laughs> this, is how, this is how people breathe. Yeah. They breathe from their chest. This is not how vocalists and performers breathe. We breathe from our bellies. So I want you to put your hand on your belly. I don't want to put my hand on your belly. And I want you to breathe out. That's it. Be fat. <laughs> now let it out. And now I want you to talk in your loudest voice. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> you just did. My name is Peter Cummings, and I specialize in face-to-face -face communication. We're here at CIC, the Venture Cafe, and just finished my second course in the music of public speaking, perfecting your pitch. 20 people in the room tonight, and I must say that every single one of them was able to get up and present themselves, was able to raise their fear of public speaking level from a one being terrible to at least a five. This is what I do, the art of communication. So please, continue to join me. You'll see this on my site. I offer free courses so that you can understand what it is I do and create workshops for various peoples, no matter what level presenter you are. Thank you very much and thank you, Venture Cafe. I had walked in to a karaoke sing-along experience. I left that night knowing what my new life was about to become. So I opened up the first karaoke sing-along business in New York State. 350,000 shoulda, coulda, woulda people that wanted to sing, but were scared to get up personally and take that act. I called it stepping out of the shower and onto the stage to experience the newest sensation in singing. You! I saw the changes that people went through. They came to me and they told me how phenomenal it was that it changed their life in the office. 
they could finally talk out loud. The thing about the fear of public speaking is that it comes in a lot of different ways. Some people can't even stop on the street and ask a stranger for directions. They think they're going to be stupid because they asked the question. Women, I think you'll agree that men are usually famous for that. <laughs> Some of you, in a different situation, will know what you want to say, but you'll get tongue-tied and nervous when you say it. Well, I've got some really great techniques for that. But this is all about you tonight. And I've talked too much with you. So, before we begin with your pitches, and incidentally, a pitch is a story. If you don't want to tell me about what you do for a living, tell me a story about your life. Tell us a story about your life. But remember three things, the three Bs. What you look like when you're talking, what you're saying, and how you say it, right? And incidentally, each of you has the opportunity to give a little bit of, I wouldn't say a critique, but some suggestions for those people that pitch. When you watch their presentation, <clears throat> keep those three things in mind. Because ultimately, it's what you look like. It's not what you say. It's not even how you say it. It's what you look like. So remember that. So on a scale of 1 to 10, Raise your hand with your fear of public speaking, if you have one. Are you a one, two, a five? Raise your hands. One, two, a five? One being the lowest. One, I'm sorry, yes, of course. One being the lowest. You're a one to five. Who's a five to 10? Great. Now, you and I have been talking, and I'm waiting for you to come up here, and you will. So please, remember. The Venture Cafe is all about sharing experiences. It's all about coming together in a community. And the sharing of these experiences can really be beautiful. We can learn from each other. I learn every single time I do a class or even a one-on-one. -on -one. And remember, you'll just keep on improving. So let me think about his story. I love the story. Yes. I love the story. And I remember what I said before, the 738-55 rule, okay? I'm not interested in his content. I don't care what he said, quite honestly. But what I want you to really be able to think about is how he said it. Did he convince you about the experience that he went through? Yes. yes. Yeah? Any, any, any comments for him? Do you think his projection was good? Did he get his message out there for you? Could be a little more loud, but... A little bit more loud? Oh, I would say, yeah. He okay. was personable, too. Very personable. Nice. It was a great story. That's and very personable. Now, I want you to take a deep breath for me from your belly now, not your chest. <laughs> this, is how, this is how people breathe. Yeah. They breathe from their chest. This is not how vocalists and performers breathe. We breathe from our bellies. Right. So I want you to put your hand on your belly I don't want to put my hand on your belly. <laughs> and I want you to breathe out. That's it. Be fat. <laughs> now let it out. And now I want you to talk in your loudest voice. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> you just did. Hi, my name is Peter Cummings. We just finished a fantastic course for on public speaking, or what I call perfecting the pitch. The music out of the whole experience. I'm standing here in a ping pong parlor. I'm here for one specific reason. Public speaking is much like playing ping pong. You have two people looking at one another face to face. One hits the ball on a serve, the other one gets it back. This is what public speaking should be an interaction between two people when you're making a pitch. I serve. You have a question. I hit it back to you. You hit it back to me. Public speaking, interacting with people, just like we play the wow, yeah. game of ping pong. I'm available to help you anytime you want. Please visit the website 